Hello, this is Joe Savage from DevHQ.net, and today we're diving into a Lua tutorial about logical operators. So if you're already familiar with logical operators from other programming languages, I suggest you just skip straight through this tutorial because they're really pretty simple. Uh, otherwise, just stick with me and we'll learn about them right now. So in the previous tutorial, we learned about if statements, and these allow us to conditionally branch our program. So we can do different things depending on different conditions. Now, this was all well and good. However, the conditions we were formulating were somewhat basic, and logical operators are one way we can improve this. So let's just say we have some kind of setup where there is a keypad and a door, and we're scripting something in Lua to ensure that the correct key has to be entered on the keypad so that the door will open. Uh, or something similar, some kind of authorization system. And we're, we're making this in a Lua script. So let's just say io.write, enter a key, and io.read, or rather key equals io.read. Uh, and let's just wrap this in a two number call so that this input is converted to a number form. So now we can compare the key with numbers. So let's just say that a valid key for this keypad is somewhere between 6,500 and 6,600. So the way we might have done this up until now is that we would have said if key is greater than 6,500, then, and then inside this, if key is less than 6,600, then, and then in here we can print key accepted, access granted. So what this is doing is saying, okay, if the key is greater than 6,500, then execute all this code. And this code is that if the key is less than 6,600, execute this code, which is the key accepted code. Now, the issue with this is that if we wanted a key denied print, we would have to write an else here. And we would also have to write an else here. And realistically, we always want these two to be the same. And it seems awfully poor form to have to nest the if statements like this as well. So this is where logical operators come in, uh, in particular, the AND logical operator. So the AND logical operator does exactly what it sounds like it does. And basically, you get two conditions, and you put an AND in the middle, and you say, OK, if this condition is true and this condition is true, then the overall condition is true. So in this example, what we would do is we would just put an AND here and write that. And so the AND logical operator is literally just expressed through the words AND in Lua. Um, and let's just get rid of all this garbage here. And this is now functionally equivalent to what we had previously. And perhaps I should have shown you that that did work, but I, I promise you it probably did. Um, so now all this reads is if key is greater than 6,500, well, that's true. Let's just say we input a key of 6,550. That's going to be true. And key is less than 6,600. So yep, if 6,550 would meet that too. So if both of these conditions are true. Therefore, the and means that the overall condition is true. Then it's going to print access granted and just put an else in so if that's not the case the key is not valid so print key denied uh, access rejected like that and let's just run this youtube.lua enter a key okay 800 key denied access rejected enter a key 6550 key accepted access granted great so it works that's the and logical operator really simple really powerful uh, let's move on to the or logical operator now can you guess what this one does Yes, you can. It gets You have two conditions. You put an or in the middle, and it means if this one is true or if this one is true, then boom. So let's just say we also have a username field. Let's change the context from this keypad and say we have some kind of authorization system that requires a username. So io.write, enter a username, uh, and username equals io.read. So now what we want to do is we only really want to check this key uh, if the username is correct, because let's just say this is an administration panel. I know I'm changing the context like crazy here, but I'm just trying to contextualize it so that it seems a little bit more real um, in a sense. So let's just say we have this if statement that's wrapping all this, and I'm not sure what we want our condition to be quite yet. Um, let's just say we want the username to be equal to admin. And that should work, so it'll say enter a username, and it will take a username, and if the username is equal to admin and the key is correct, then we'll get a key accepted. Um, and perhaps we should have some kind of username denied thing here. Print username denied, and we'll print up here username accepted. In fact, I know what we should do. Let's let's have the key input only happen once their username is accepted. That kind of makes more sense. So if their username is accepted, so if the username is admin, then we ask for the key, and then we do the key comparison. Uh, or if their username isn't accepted, we just print username denied. No point wasting their time with the key. So let's just run that. And it should work. So if the username is admin, we're prompted for a key, and we can put in a valid key, and that works as previous. Uh, and if we put in an invalid username, username denied. Okay. 
Now, what if we want to have an alias for this admin username? So the admin can log in under the username admin, but also under the username Joe, for example. Now, again, we have the situation where we could have these horrible nested if statements, or as you might be able to foresee here, we could just use the or logical operator. So if username equals equals admin, or if username equals equals Joe, then we do all this stuff. So that should now work the same. But if we, in fact, let's just take that out just for a second. If we put in a username Joe previously, we get username denied. But now if we bring that back, if we put in a username Joe, you should be able to see that this condition will be true. Thus, we should get this stuff. So username Joe, hey, we're prompted for a key. And now we can put in a valid key. Or we can put in an invalid key. Great. So everything works as expected. That's and, and, or. Really simple, really powerful, great. Now, the last logical operator we're going to talk about is a little bit different to these two. And it is the not logical operator. So let's just take all this stuff away. In fact, maybe we can even bring back the code we had before. So uh, is there an exit function in Lua? I, I kind of assume there is. Uh, so we don't want that there. So in all other cases, we want to exit. Uh, otherwise, we want to set access granted. In fact, no, let's, let's not do that. Let's set access granted to false and access granted to false. So we have some kind of system here. If they get everything correct, they get access granted true. Otherwise, everyone else has access granted false. Uh, in fact, it would be more efficient to define access granted as false. Now we don't need these. And we can only set it to true in a very specific situation. So now we have this Boolean variable access granted, which equals either true or false, depending on whether we've granted the user access to the system. Now, what if we want to do a check for whether the user is authorized? It's pretty simple, right? We just say if access granted, then, and then we do some stuff that's specific to if they have authorization. Now, what if we want to do something if the user isn't authorized? And we, we don't want like an else situation. We only want to do this thing if the user is not authorized. So at current, we would probably do does not equal true. So if the access granted does not equal true, and that, that works, but it's kind of better form to be able to just use it like this, because it's just a Boolean variable, we should just be able to kind of deal with it in the condition. And so the not logical operator basically just flips a Boolean. So we could say if not access granted, and this condition would be if the user is not properly authorized in this case. Um, and that's, that's pretty much what it's used for, it's just used for flipping a Boolean variable. So this is also useful for if we wanted to for some reason, now I, I literally can't think of why you would do this in this context. But let's say we wanted to make all users that had their access granted suddenly be revoked their access and all users that didn't have any access suddenly get access. What we want to do is we want to flip the value of the variable. So we could say something like access granted equals not access granted. And that would work as I just described. So sorry about the abstract nature of explaining not there. but. Those are the three logical operators in Lua, uh, and, or, and not. They're very powerful, uh, especially so as we've sort of described for making use of more complex compound uh, if statement conditions. Uh, but that really is all I have to say in this tutorial. If you want to know more information about anything I've talked about in this tutorial, if you're viewing on YouTube, the text tutorial is linked in this video description, or if you're viewing on the website, the text tutorial is just below where this video is embedded. That's all I have to say in this tutorial, and have a nice day.